vos émissions préférées, elles sont toutes sur Radio Grand Lac. Your English Weekly. Your English Weekly. La chronique 100% en anglais de Radio Grand Lac avec Sinéad. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Your English Weekly. Um, bonjour, chers auditeurs, et bien, bienvenue à Your English Weekly sur Radio Grand Lac 92.1 FM, l'émission qui vous présente le meilleur de la langue, de la culture, et bien sûr, un peu de divertissement avec Tim aujourd'hui. Je suis votre animatrice Sinead et nous sommes ravis d'y être là aujourd'hui pour présenter notre cours à deux B1. Donc, euh, un petit contenu assez passionnant. Tim, what's your story today? It's on kombucha. D'accord. Et moi, je vais vous parler un petit peu de la langue gaélique. Well, avant de faire tout ça, je vous souhaite une bonne écoute sur l'émission. Et bien sûr que vous pouvez nous retrouver à Your English Workshop, à Aix-les-Bains et la Bavoie. Et n'oubliez pas, nos stages d'enfants pour les primaires et les collèges sont ouverts pour les vacances scolaires avec le partenariat, le CNV1. Well, good afternoon, lovely listeners, and welcome to Your English Weekly. This is the show that brings you the best between culture and entertainment, and of course, as a language experience. I'm your host, Sinead, and I'm thrilled to be here with Tim today. So, Tim, yes. tell us about what you're going to speak about. I'm going to speak about kombucha. It's oh. a, a drink, um, okay. fermatized drink, okay. and uh. it's supposed to have a positive effect on your metabolism. Okay, well. and I'm going to talk to you about the language and the Gaelic languages that have with their origins and their evolution. So before we start, Tim, yes. listeners, tune in, take out your pen and paper, take down a few notes and stay with us for the next 10 minutes. Okay, Tim, mm -hmm. so before we start, can you tell us what your pun of the day is? Oh, okay. It's, uh, what did one hat say to the other? So what did one hat, in chapeau, mm -hmm. a hat, say to the other? Don't Qu'est-ce que c'est un chapeau qui dit à l'autre chapeau? Well, Tim, tell us what they said. You stay here, I'll go on ahead. You stay here, I'll go on ahead. Okay, listeners, so now try and write that one down. You stay here and I'll go on ahead. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Tim, give us what are we going? What are our listeners going to hear today about kombucha? Well, do you, you can hear the vocabulary which I'm going to mention. Okay, let's start. So, to, to mimic, imiter, fasting, le jeûne, sweetened, sucré, to surge in popularity, bénéficier d'une popularité, health benefits. Des avantages pour la santé. A worm. Alors, a worm, c'est un ver de terre. Yeast. La levure. To occur. Ben, se produire. To alter. Modifier. Fat metabolism. Euh, des métabolismes de graisse. To break down. Décomposer. To store. Stocker. Damaged cells. Alors, les cellules abîmées. And removal. La suppression. Alors, listeners, you will find this article in English now, 134, with the Ju June and July edition. Okay, so it's about can kombucha mimic the effect of fasting? So... If anyone doesn't know, kombucha is a sweetened fermented tea, mm. which has surged in popularity recently. And that's obviously well, mostly to do with its health benefits. Research is at the, at the University in North Carolina fed worms with kombucha, and they found that the yeast and bacteria colonize the worms' intestines 
and create metabolic changes similar to those that occur during fasting. The microbes alter the expression of genes involved in fat metabolism, leading to more proteins that break down fats and fewer proteins that build a type of fat molecule called triglycerides. This can cause the body to use fat for energy instead of storing it. It also results in the repair of damaged cells and the removal of dead cells. So in the past, fermented foods used to be consumed much more than they are today. So yeah, um, why don't you go and have a drink for your health? Mm. So kombucha mm -hmm. is an actual fact, a tea. Mm. Fermented tea. Fermented tea. I wonder where we could find that maybe in... Um... Yeah, we, was, surely there must be some place in X. Right. Well, perhaps we could find something like that in the biocorp <laughs> or places that do natural uh, natural foods. Yes. So I would yeah, probably suggest I'll go and hunt for that <laughs> after. Okay, why not? Yeah. Okay, thank you. No worries. So do you know what do you know about the Celtic and of course Gaelic languages? I um <laughs> the Celts were the well, it used to be uh, scared. Well, they used to attack the southern lands, didn't they? A long mm. time ago in history. Mm. Oh, they're very historic. Yeah. They date back. Do you know when they date back to? No, probably 8th century, 9th century. Well, 12th. 12th century. Oh, okay. 12th century BCE. So what does wow. BCE stand for? Before Common Era. So before Common Era is what we used to call the BC before Christ, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so listeners, you're going to hear some words today. I'll tell you them as I go along, okay? So the let's talk about the Celtic and the Gaelic language, languages, the origins and the evolution. The Celtic languages form a branch of the wider Indo-European language with their origins tracing back to Proto-Celtic language, which was spoken, speak spoken, about 12 BCE. The Celts, an ancient Indo-European people, spread across much of Europe. So spread, se répand, across much of Europe, and their languages evolved into various branches over centuries. The Celtic language family are broadly divided into two groups. You've got the Gaelic, or Godelic, as some say, which is the Irish and the Scottish. And then you've got the Bri Bri no, Brythonic, which is the Welsh. So Irish Gaelic, which is probably the oldest of the Godelic languages. Irish Gaelic is spoken in Ireland since about the 4th century. It has a very rich literary tradition with manuscripts dating back to the early medieval period. Despite the dominance of English, Irish Gaelic is still taught teach, taught, taught, taught in schools and used in official settings in Ireland. So we have places like Glendalough, which I live beside, which goes back to the 11th century BCE. So we're going back a long time. Then we have the Scottish Gaelic, which originates from Irish settlers in Scotland, so settlers, the Cullum, around 5th century CE. So Scottish Gaelic developed its own distinct identity. It thrived in the Highlands. So thrived, il a prospéré in the Highlands and the islands of Scotland, but faced significant decline post 18th century due to political and social pressures. Now, today, it's experiencing a revival. 
So what's a revival in English? In French, I mean, sorry, renouveau, a revival. So, of course, supported by educational programs and media. So then we have, from there, we've got what we call the Manx. Did you ever hear of the Manx? Language. Okay. Well, believe it or not, that's not quite there. That's going to come from Cornish. Oh, okay. Well, Cornish. But the Manx is spoken on the Isle of Man. Oh, okay. So do you, where is the Isle of Man, Tim? It's uh, off the coast of southern England. Yeah, exactly. And there they speak what they call Manx Gaelic, which is related very similar to Irish and Scottish. Huh? Mm-hmm. And it's had a decline as well in the 19th or 20th century. Same thing. It has undergone or went underway so um, on core uh, of a revival since the 1980s of course using schools and education and of course uh, initiatives in culture too so now we have the brythonic languages we've got the welsh the cornish as i just said and the breton which is the French, Brittany. So the Welsh, which is one of the oldest languages in Britain, the Welsh has been spoken for over 1,400 years, despite the spread of English. It's very vibrant, especially in Wales. And there's a beautiful article in Now magazine for that as well. So where there is a crucial part of national identity. And then we have Breton, brought to Brittany, which is what called uh, the Bretagne in French, um, by Celts, Britons, fleeing the Anglo-Saxon invasions. So these uh, Bretons uh, share similarities with the Welsh and the Cornish. Despite their decline, it is still spoken in parts of Brittany, and the same thing, efforts are underway to preserve it. Same thing for the Cornish in English, in in England. Um, Same things, they're trying to keep it up. Anyway, all of that to say that it is important to keep your cultural significance, and the Celtic languages are that too. They are means of communication, but they're also carriers. What is carriers in French, Tim? They Carry, porte, a porter. A porter. They porter of rich cultural language they hold, like we do in Ireland, folklore, music, poetry, history, I don't know, festivals, etc. And they do play a big role in the cultural life of Celtic-speaking regions. So, we must try and preserve all of this. So, how do we preserve all of this, Tim? Um, we have to educate children, I mm, guess. Of course. And, of course, we're very lucky with our technological advances, mm-hmm. such as digital media, language learning apps. Think of Duolingo, for example. Mm-hmm. And they offer new platforms for learning and using Celtic languages. So potentially they are trying to secure their future for other generations to come, which is very, very important. So the story of Celtic and Gaelic languages is resilience and revival. And this reflects the spirit, the culture pride of the speakers. Do you speak any... uh, no. Gaelic, no. No Gaelic. no Gaelic. Okay. Even though I'm Irish, I don't speak Gaelic because I grew up in Canada. But they continue to shape identities and traditions of the communities that cherish them. Now, cherish, what does that mean to cherish? Honore. So the communities that honor them, that cherish them. Well, listeners, before I finish my tip of the day, whenever possible, try and use the active voice like I have just done instead of the passive voice. 
The active voice makes your sentences clearer and more direct. For example, well, let's think of let's think of Tim here, the chef. <laughs> the chef prepared a delicious meal. Uh, uh, del- where the passive voice would be a delicious meal was prepared by the chef. So by using the active voice, you make your speaking more engaging. So there you are, listeners. Well, I hope you learned more with us today with Tim. Expanded your vocabulary. You can listen to this podcast on YouTube. We air every Tuesday from a quarter past 12 to half past 12. And we provide the perfect dose of language and culture to brighten your day. Don't miss on the fun and come back next week. But please stay tuned. We have a special uh, show, donc il y a Mission Spéciale Collectif by Créar. Donc by Créar, c'est le marché des créateurs. Donc je les dis bravo parce qu'ils sont fantastiques, je les connais personnellement. De 13h à 14h, une heure, une commune avec Jean-Pierre, la Motte Servalex et bien sûr le cinéma avec le 16 neuvième avec Jérôme, euh, Guillaume et Vincent. 19h30, 20h30. Bon, ben, ça c'est tout ce qu'il y a aujourd'hui en 92.1 FM avec Radio Grand Lac. I'll say bye to you from us at you. Your English Weekly Quickly. La chronique 100% en anglais de Radio Grand Lac avec Sinéad.